Hey, what's good, y'all? It's your boy DJ Fanatic Beats, content contributor for LiveOffBeats.com. Uh, in today's video, I'm basically going over mixing, uh, basically my mixing uh, procedure or technique. Hopefully, I say something super dope for you to take home and kind of use on your productions and take your music up to another level, but also to help your workflow because mixing... Not every producer knows it. Um, everyone has their own style and it's not do it this way and do it that way. But this is just a method that helped me through the years and also helped up, help speed up my process as far as mixing. Um, uh, it's a beat that I finished not too long ago. Uh, it came out pretty dope. I'll play it in a second. But um, yeah, if you like to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram at DJ Fanatic Beats. That's P-H-A-N-A-T-I-C or Sounds for Producers on Instagram as well. So um, first uh, here, let me hit play so you get in the mood. that hard on the beat <laughs> you ever make so much stuff you forgot you made it so anyway um so mixing process um usually some people start with everything all the way down and then they just start with the drums first i've seen a lot of producers do that you can do that technique um you know you start with everything all the faders all the way down or at reset level um actually i never seen anyone start at a reset level uh, well it actually starts at reset level at the default level like this track 16 here but usually um not to confuse you think of uh, mixing as three parts first number one is your levels of each sound this is after you made the beat after you threw in all these different melodies all these drums all these nuances all this stuff um one uh focus on the volumes um what i tend to do and this is kind of a workaround of that but i don't want to get get you confused especially if you're new at mixing uh, but if you're new at mixing it's best to start with the volumes so after your beats done you got everything in the same volume of course you know when you're working with different plugins and different sounds and stuff you know certain things will be louder than others you can kind of bring it down here in a channel rack or in a mixer depends on whatever doll you're using but as you make the music but um you want to focus on the volumes first after your beats done or while you're doing it i tend to do it um while i'm making the music i tend to lower certain things that i know okay this melody I know that melody is pretty much the focal point of the beat. See, notice it goes through the entire uh, beat. So what I would do is kind of put that in the background and notice how low that first flute is. And then the brass. So I wanted the brass to be a little more in your face and a little louder. So notice it's above the flutes that goes in the background. The piano is a nice little. So visually or sonically, I wanted the piano to be over top of that because it's a nice melody. I wanted it to stand out. This is piano two. So volume wise, you can just look at it. That second piano, I wanted a little lower than the main melody. And this lead, I think it was kind of piercing. It's not that piercing, uh, probably because I EQ'd it and stuff. But um, the lead, notice I panned it. I'll get into that in a second. But um, basically, you want to focus on where you want specific sounds. Like if you know something's going through the whole beat you can kind of put it in the background and you can always revisit the volumes once you start learning how you want certain things to stand out uh certain leads you know you have to pull back a little bit because they're really loud um and you also 
consider your other elements that you I usually work from left to right so whatever sound or chords or melody I start with you know I be like okay this will be about right here in volume okay this yeah I'll pull this up a little bit the piano part is a very significant part in a beat I want to stand out I'll raise it a little bit and as you move from left to right on volumes only uh, you tend to build the volume I mean the the structure of the beat so like for snares these are layered snares um, if you notice the drums are hitting hard in this beat let me just play it again so it's like a second snare that hits on the two so it's an accented snare it's not the main snare so I brought it down in volume a little bit so it's emphasizing the first snare so you got to be mindful of things like that um, in this particular beat that's what I did and it looks like I did the same thing with the kick notice the second kick is a little lower than the first kick so focus on volumes first I usually work from left to right and I don't uh, what I recommend uh, that would speed up the process uh, if you're an intermediate producer you've been producing for a couple years um, I don't know maybe three five years or more um, you can actually learn how to uh, use the volumes as you're making a beat and that's what I do um, I used to make the whole beat and then do volumes uh, for mixing purposes and as I started moving faster with production you know I'm moving quick I know like what part of that melody or the chords or whatever see right here that is supporting chords and they're brass so I kind of want those in the background I don't want those all in your face and everyone's like yeah this beat sucks <laughs> you know what I mean so you got to pay attention to your mixing because you can make the best beat ever and your mixing is not on point nobody wants to hear it like the listener already naturally detaches it themselves from it so um so yeah volumes first and what I tend to do like I said is um, work on the volumes while I'm making a beat because I know where I want each sound and you can also monitor your volumes in the channel rack NFL studio I know a lot of other dolls have quick access to volumes per sound in the um, in another section other than the mixer so you can you know uh, control it here and control it here as well but be mindful of your levels in your mixer because when you're doing uh, track outs and stems you don't want them to be so low that whoever the engineer that gets the beat or artist that gets the beat they ask you to boost the signals because you lowered it so low in the channel rack you know not being mindful of how loud it was in the mixer so you got to be mindful of your routing in your DAW and I actually like the first couple beats I made and that sold and they bought the stems they're I had engineers like yo your sounds are mad low and I never knew that you know because I had it uh, loud in one area but low going to the mixer and low going to the master so be mindful of that so that's number one volumes and that's a different way of working with volumes number two um, you want to um, see this see I hate saying a B you know one two or three but it's a good way to have structure and then you can develop your own technique uh, so once the beat's done, you figured out all the volumes. Uh, another cool thing to do is um, uh, number two is panning. You know, you can see this is like another level of mixing. Um, with panning, oh man, it, it can get really complex. Notice there's not much panning done here because a lot of the sounds. Check it out. Now, if you notice, the piano is going left and right. The bass, I mean, the brass is going kind of left and right. The flute's going left and right. So there's a lot of panning within the sounds already. And there's a lot of movement. Uh, but sp specific things, like um, I know a lot of producers, like listen to top songs on Billboard, top songs on, you know, all top selling songs, radio, whatever. A lot of times they pan main melodies to the right. And there's like a lot of producers and engineers have some type of templates where they've been doing it for years and you can study hit songs. Um, it depends on what direction you want to go. If you want to make a hit song, a lot of times specific leads are panned to the right. 
Um, but it doesn't mean that you have to do that. You can use your ear and trust your judgment. Um, so you got your volume. Second thing is panning. You kind of decide what ear you want each sound. Uh, be mindful though. Um, you got to have some type of understanding where, let's say for instance, I got these two hi-hats. Let's just solo these. And notice, I only pan this one a little bit left. Uh, I think it's like 10%, like 5%, whatever. And this one is not even panned at all, but you notice it's going left to right. So usually hi-hats, I'll make them dance together, like, cause they're in the higher frequency range. And what I mean by that, when you open EQ, both of these hi-hats are similar areas and frequency so usually with panning you kind of want to be mindful of like these two kicks are similar in frequency you want to be mindful of frequencies when you're panning that way you can kind of figure out okay i can pan this one because it fits in this frequency range i can pan that left and i pan that right but notice there's not much panning because a lot of the sounds already have panning in them in this particular beat every beat is different every sound is different everything is unique so be mindful of every time you do this. Uh, so I don't go crazy with the panning too much. Uh, depends how creative I want to be and what type of beat it is. But sometimes with hi-hats, I like doing crazy stuff like that. Um, and the second hi-hat, uh, where is it? I think this is it. Oh, that's a kick. Here it is. notice as i open the note pan um i created panning within the uh, piano roll so it's not in the mixer so that's a creative thing i chose to do with the second hi-hat in this particular beat and you might not even notice that when i hit play initially when i started this video but that's just little things that i like to do to make my beat stand out and uh i definitely recommend you explore different things um because that first hi-hat has like a steady rhythm to it. <laughs> so you get the point. So you got your volumes while you're working on the beat. Um, if you're a beginner, I definitely recommend <clears throat> my bad, uh, finishing the beat first and then mix it. That way you're focusing on the creative aspect of it. You make making a beat as best that you can and then you have a mixing focus. See, so honing in on these things separately will build you over time as a producer. So, yeah, so you got your mixing, I um, mean your volumes uh, or they call it gain staging. Um also then you got your panning and last, uh, not last, but uh, the other thing, number three, what I usually do um, is what they call is processing, like plugins, basically. Uh, pretty much every sound, if you notice, as I click through every sound, I use Fruity Parametric EQ2. Um, I, this is a very powerful tool. Uh, it's probably one of my favorites in the, in the um, software because I use it limiting like not limiting but I use it to take away frequencies that I don't need in a particular sound so I'm basically shaping the sound shaping the frequency range of the sound to fit in the beat with the other related sounds so using that one plugin on every sound gives me so much control to make my mixes stand out crazy I'm giving you some stuff right now I'm trying to tell you this whatever EQ you have there's tons of different EQs uh, this one I like because saw so that you can see the energy, you can see visually where it falls instead of, you know, relying on your ear. And sometimes, you know, our ears can play tricks on us. So anyway, Fruity Parametric EQ2. Uh, sometimes I use like this flute. I did a lot of crazy stuff too. It's halftime. Two different EQs. Why did I do that? I don't even know why I did that. Oh, I EQ'd after halftime. I did a re use reverser, then re reverb after all that. So I, I kind of did some creative stuff with that. 
and I probably pitched it too. So uh, just EQ, reverb and delay three, fruity delay three on the piano, on the main melody. Let's play that by itself. See, first I shaped it, the frequency. I took out the lows, added some nice reverb, and then I added delay on top. So let's take off all the plugins. Very dry and not much life. So that's what's making that piano melody stand out even more is that I spent time to create different things added to it with processing, signal processing, adding effects onto it. Um, don't go crazy with effects, you know, because you can actually go crazy with effects. That's how you run into errors and you become better at it. Um, I remember I used to throw reverb on everything and everything just sounded muddy and I didn't know what I was doing with tempo wise or frequency. I didn't know what I was doing, but the more you explore, the better you get at it. So, um, so you got volumes. First thing you want to focus on, then you're panning and then you're processing. And what I tend to do, I mix all these up now. I'm at the point where I'm grateful that I'm at the point where I can pretty much do all three at the same time while I'm creating the beat. And you'll, you, you might be there too, you know, uh, because I know immediately, okay, this flute, yeah, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna add, yeah, let's just try this and let's do that and cut out the frequency here and then try that. Okay, bet. Next sound. Okay, I know the flute's going to be a little lower than this sound because this sounds, you know, I want this to stand out. So I'm making the beat. I'm doing volumes. I'm thinking about panning. Usually panning comes towards the end if I didn't pan it. Um, I'll do like one more um, overview after beat's done and I'll listen. I'm like, okay, I want this hi-hat over here. You know what I mean? So... Sometimes I do it like that. Actually, I do that pretty much at every beat. I'll listen over it one more time after I'm done and then make some final tweaks. So, yeah. And after that, uh, after you got your volume straight, you got your panning straight, you got every sound that you want, you know, whatever plugins you want to use. Um, some people send like the drums to a, a group and then do some processing in addition to their drums. Some do a separate drum, um, like kicks, hi-hat, whatever. Whoops. Um, they'll do like a drum mix and then bring in sounds. And I do, actually I might try that uh, more often because it's well known for like hip hop and whatnot because you always want your drums to be knocking for hip hop and you want them to stand out. And you can do a drum mix first make that those drums just sound crazy together and then bring in your melodies and whatnot and you can do it that way and i used to do it that way so i don't know why i stopped but i might do that on some more projects coming up so and after all that's done those three main things um you can work on your mastering whatever plugins you use uh to clean everything up and touch it up and you know there you go that's the mixing my mixing process and just gave you some examples as well to, you know, for other um, options and mixing. So, like I said, don't let it overwhelm you. Um, you can write it down on a piece of paper. That's what I did, you know, starting out. I was like, okay, one, focus on volumes. Two, the side of my panning. And, and you can always change it after you start doing processing and whatnot. Um, if you decide to do processing before panning, um, sometimes it's difficult to hear where you want certain things. Like you have a delay, you might not, uh, if you have like ping pong delay, you might not want to pan it. So, you know, you can interchange them depending on what you want to do and depending on the sound. But I would focus on panning first and then processing. Um, so, yeah. So anyway, uh, let me just play a little bit of the beat so you get an idea. And we're going to keep the mixer visual so you can kind of see what's going on uh, as the beat plays through.
right underneath. So again, it's your boy DJ Fanatic Beats, content contributor for liveoffbeats.com. If you'd like to follow me, follow me at Instagram at DJ Fanatic Beats or uh, Sounds for Producers as well, Instagram. So definitely experiment. You know, the more repetition you do with mixing, man, the better you get at it, just like with anything. And uh, don't be afraid to mess up. You know, it's all right. Not everybody knows how long you've been doing this. I mean, trained ears might know, but you know, just keep, keep at it and you get better and better. All right. Peace and blessings.